let's look as to why you need that background. Welcome to SETI Astro. So this is part three as to where my background is. I just want to demonstrate why finding a good background really uh, matters and the differences that could arise just trying to manually choose a background versus having something trying to find the optimal background for you. I have three images that we'll go ahead and test on. Uh, one with SHO and then two RGB. Currently I haven't done anything besides remove gradients on them and combine them. Uh, I'm in linked stretch. If you unlink the stretch, you can kind of get a better idea of what's going on in each of the three. But we'll go ahead and uh, look at some background examples and how that changes our results. First image here of the southern pinwheel. You can see it's clearly dominated by a pedestal on the green and blue channels versus the red. So using the unlinked stretch, we'll stretch them all similarly to get you a more neutral background versus the linked stretch where it just uh, links all the, the channels together. So let's go ahead and just draw an arbitrary background, a couple of them, and then we'll also use the script to find the optimal background and see what background neutralization and color calibration and SBCC, how they all operate a little bit differently based on the background we choose. So in this case, the background is pretty flat uh, I just drew two kind of previews, one up over here and one down here. And now we'll go ahead and run the script, script SETI Astro, find background. I'll just tell it to search, leaving it at the, the default settings. And it's done. And here's the background region that it found down there. So let's go ahead and just uh, run through a couple examples and then we can compare them to see what the difference in this image the background is going to make. For the setup, I took uh, three clones of our main image here, and then I copied over the background, preview two, and preview one, just uh, so we have all the images that we can then compare. So we'll go ahead and run through uh, background, neutralization and color calibration on all three and look at the differences. Okay, background neutralization color calibration is done. We'll just go ahead and run linked stretches on all of them. And then we'll go ahead and do some comparisons to see if there are any differences between them. So the first, we'll look at the differences between just the two arbitrary previews, preview one and preview two. Here's preview one, kind of has a green background. Preview two looks better with a more neutral background, a little bluer. So preview one, preview two. And now we'll go ahead and compare it with the background that Find Background found. So now we're looking between what Find Background found and Preview 2, which was our, our other best one. And the differences are a lot more subtle here. Here's the one with Find Background. Here's the one that we found with uh, just guessing at a background. So the biggest differences for sure were between Preview 1 and Preview 2. Preview 2 was a pretty good guess as to where the true background was, uh, but running the script takes that guesswork out of there. And this was an easy image to try to find a background on. Almost the entire sky is a background. It's those variations and even the integrated flux and the flux from the background itself that is leading to those variations. So even with a image where pretty much the entire thing is background, it still matters what you determine as fine background. So let's move on to some examples now where changing your background preview are gonna lead to much more drastic changes in the end results. Okay, here's an image of Andromeda. 
This has much more extended features with it. And uh, I'll go ahead and place some backgrounds in here. Uh, maybe we think of backgrounds down there. Let's go ahead and, and select a spot where there probably isn't true background just to have it uh, be a little further off. Let's, let's, let's take this preview two up here. And now we'll go ahead and run the script for finding the background. All right, and it's done. It found its background over here. So we'll go ahead and make three copies of the image. We'll set the preview into each one of them and do color calibration uh, based on those different background previews. Running a linked STF, you can see that uh, these have not been color balanced at all. Uh, green and blue pedestals are, are quite high in this image as well. We'll go ahead and run SPCC, which uh, is the premier color calibrating process for PixInsight, and we'll see how changing the background preview changes the end result. Okay, SBCC is done running. We'll go ahead and do link stretches on all three of them. And then what I'm going to do is to really highlight the differences in the color of the images, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the saturation just so it's easier to see on screen. But it's really easy to see here that the one where we choose, chose preview two here is, is not ideal at all. It, it has a sickly green background, even with SPCC, which should be utilizing the stars to do a, a perfect color calibration. Let's go ahead and, and boost that saturation so we can see those differences. Okay, now that we have the saturation boosted, you wouldn't do this for processing your image. Uh, it makes everything look weird, but it, it helps. I, it's going to help us more clearly see through the YouTube algorithm the, the difference in color. So here's the one that find background found. Nice neutral background. And then here is just an arbitrary background we chose. You can see it's a, a much greener color. So normal background our arbitrarily chosen background. It's a, it's a much more of a sickly green color. And just clicking and, and looking at them, you can see that the, the green component is uh, on average quite a bit stronger than in the, in the neutral, the neutral one. Now between the fine background background and the other one that we chose those look pretty good um, they look relatively similar the one that find background found does have a more neutral background than just the other arbitrary spot we got so it is I mean it's it's very possible for you to find a, a good background to use for color calibration but the script is going to find you the best. And we could actually be a lot more uh, mathematical about this. We could just take the difference between these two images, stretch it, and see what is actually a di the difference between the background find background found and our arbitrary preview over here and what looks like a good look looks like a good background. So I'm just gonna tell it to take the absolute value between RGB clone 2, which is the one that we ran fine background on, and RGB clone, which had our good uh, arbitrarily chosen background. We'll create a new image, and then we'll just run STF. And here is our unlinked STF stretch now. This is the difference between the two images based on one pretty darn good arbitrary background and the optimal background we found. You can see that there is quite a cast in the background that's different. And then the galaxy and the stars themselves have a, a different cast that was different. So it 
it matters what the background is even if by eye the differences aren't that extreme the more you process your image the more you start bringing out those colors the more saturation you utilize within your processing the bigger the differences are going to start manifesting themselves between some arbitrarily chosen background and one that is algorithmically determined to be the optimal one that you're going to be able to get out of your image. Lastly, we'll look at color calibrating SHO image via background neutralization and color calibration. Again, I'm going to just arbitrarily choose a background. It's a lot harder here. There's nebulosity throughout the entire image. It, it, it looks, I mean, it, it looks pretty dark up here. I'm going to go ahead and use that as a background preview. And then on the other one, we're going to go ahead and tell the script to find the background for us. So it found the background uh, down in this other corner. So let's go ahead and run through background neutralization and color calibration uh, for our two images here. All right, once we're done doing background neutralization and color calibration, we can go ahead and run a linked STF. And now we can go ahead and, and compare the two images. One has a, a red hue across the whole thing versus one with a much more natural background. And we'll go ahead and do the, the same trick with pixel math. We'll just take the absolute value of the difference between the two and we could look mathematically at the difference between the, the two images. So we'll go ahead and put in the pixel math and run our new image. and see what the differences between the two actually were. There, a huge amount of green. So between the two different backgrounds, the calibration was calibrating the green very differently from, from one to the other. And you can see that here. So in the one where the background was found via find background, it is a much more neutral background color. And the one we arbitrarily chose has that, that greener cast over the whole thing. So here's again the arbitrary and the fine background. So I hope these examples uh, help demonstrate why having a consistent, algorithmically defined background region of interest is important. Even when utilizing SPCC, it changes the overall image, uh, even though that is using the, the star flux to do our color calibration. That background still, still makes a difference. And depending on your personal preference, that difference may or may not be more important. But the goal was getting a quick script where you could drag and drop an icon right onto the image and it goes through and just finds a background for you without you having to manually and arbitrarily find what you think is a good background was the entire goal of setting the script out. So we hope you get a lot of great use out of the script and I hope and I hope this helps clear up any questions in your mind as to how the background region of interest affects the color in the overall image when you go through these various steps of neutralization, color calibration, SPCC, or even things like continuum subtraction. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe.